Dan Williams Survive Outdoors. Today, I'm pretty excited. Got some new photographs of some really cool rashes. We have two rashes by the same species of tick, two different patients. Pretty unique. I have only run across this maybe two or three times. Some news. We have new merchandise. It's in the description below. We've got two links, one for hats, one for shirts. Check it out. And here we go. Okay, I'm going to give you two case presentations, and we're going to call one patient A and one patient B, and then I have a third case that I'll bring up at the end, and we're going to have these pretty interesting photographs uh, for you to evaluate. So, first patient, patient A, 35-year-old male, uh, working in Wisconsin, lives in the northern edge of Illinois. Um, in the last four weeks, he's been fishing on a farm pond. He does work outdoors. He comes in with this rash. It is uh, somewhat diffuse, meaning it's all over his body. And there are these oval, circular, very slight red. You'll have to, you have to look really closely to see these. There's many of them on his back, on his arm, behind his knee. So he went into the emergency room with just this rash uh, up in Wisconsin somewhere. Uh, they drew blood. It was all normal. Uh, they assessed him. They didn't know what it was, and they gave him a steroid cream, even though it didn't itch. So I really don't understand that, but they gave him something. He comes and sees me two weeks later with the same rash. Sometimes it fades. Sometimes it becomes redder. And it does not itch. And then he tells me, and I'm somewhat perplexed when I saw it, not sure what it was, but then he tells me that his shoulders are really aching him and he's more fatigued than normal. This is a healthy looking guy. Uh, no previous illnesses, nothing. But as soon as he's told me about his joint pain, then all the red flags went up in my head. So we drew um, Lyme, ehrlichiosis, and babesiosis and I'm going to show you his blood results here not only did he have one he had two he had three he had four of the five bands of IgM remember we talked about the bands IgM is the early antibody that you have to uh, look at and then after that goes away you get the IgG antibody and you have to have three of the five bands of the first one he had four of the five started on doxycycline I talked to him about five days after that happy as can be, he feels so much better. So what he had was disseminated Lyme, early disseminated Lyme, the second stage of Lyme disease. So the second stage of Lyme disease can be a few weeks or it can be up to a few months. And if you don't catch it early, that's when it can affect your heart, severe arthritis of your joints. Um, his heart and his rhythm was fine, there was no problems. But we caught this just in the nick of time, and um, that was pretty exciting. Patient B, within this month, 57, no, 62-year-old female, uh, always wanted to see Cape Cod, and she goes out northeast with her husband to view Cape Cod. Beautiful area. I've been there once. And the northeastern part of the United States, that is ground zero for Lyme disease. She comes back two weeks later, and on her belly, she has this classic textbook rash of Lyme disease. I mean, it is like right out of the books. And you're going to get to see that rash. Both individuals are positive for Lyme disease. Both individuals were treated with doxy, and you have two different rashes. Both rashes did not itch. They do not burn. Vitals were stable. Uh, both patients are going to get better. But this little vector Lyme disease tick, this deer tick, this year, we've already at our clinic had, I think, seven cases. It's the most I've ever seen. So these tick-borne illnesses are on the rise this year, big time. Almost a mistake. Have a conservation officer in his 30s come seasoning. He has a red rash around his ankle. It is not warm. Sometimes he says it's warm. It fluctuates. No history of gout. 
vitals are fine. He's not limping, no trauma. So I look at it, I draw a uh, uric acid level to check for gout because this rash is really funky. It's not round and oval like the first patient. He doesn't have a target lesion like the second patient and it's around a joint. His joint is mildly sore, no other symptoms, no other joint pain, no other rash. So I basically start him on prednisone, low dose, going to treat the gout. Talked to him two days later, he's feeling better. On the fourth day, it came back and he wasn't doing well. He goes to another clinic and they start him on an antibiotic, clindamycin, and I call him up and he says it's just not getting better. I said, you know, I was home the other night thinking about this and I'm like, we need to get you back in. Why? He's a conservation officer. Am I kidding myself? Really? I had him come back. I drew Lyme, I drew Ehrlichiosis, I drew Babesiosis, should have picked it up on the first visit. His Lyme disease, um, his Lyme titers come back, he's positive for Lyme disease. So occupational hazard, you got to think of that. So if you hunt, if you fish, if you camp, you know, it's something that you want to think about. So I'm putting this video up for a couple reasons. The rashes are really important for you to look at. None of you will miss the target rash. But the other rash where you get multiple little red ovals or circles, that one is important. So check it out. Be aware of those rashes that you might pick up if you're in the outdoors backpacking, hiking. Think about where you're going. Make sure you cover yourself for prevention with picaridin. It's my uh, mosquito and tick repellent of choice. Any questions, throw them down below. Any little short stories of your experiences with Lyme and tick illnesses, would love to hear them. You like the video? Thumbs up. Subscribe. We love it. Keep your eyes on the horizon. Face the wind. Take care.